problem for us, you need to read it loud so that the people in the video can hear it. Julie had five pages of stickers. Each page had 36 stickers on it. How many stickers did she have? Okay, so the first thing that we do when we solve a problem like this is we need to think about what our answer statement would be, or you can call that your mmm statement. But think about some things that you um, wouldn't know the answer to. Like how many hairs are on my head? You can say... I have mmm hairs on my head. That's right. We don't know the answer to that. And right now we don't know the answer to this question. So we're going to write a mmm statement or an answer statement for this question. Can you tell me an answer statement for this question? Okay. Um, Julie has mm, stickers on each page. I mean, um, stickers in her on five pages. Okay. Can somebody think of another way to say it? Julie has mm, stickers too. Okay. One more way. Did you have something different? One. You had that one. Okay. So we're going to write down here. Do you like to write this at the top or at the bottom? At the top. At the bottom. It doesn't really matter the way you do it, so I'm going to write it at the top. So Julie has mm, stickers. You said total? Okay. Now, the second thing that we do when we do model drawing is we think about the who and the what. So who are we talking about in this problem? Julie. Julie. And we're talking about Julie's what? Stickers. Stickers. So I'm going to do like every good writer does and put my apostrophe S and then I'm going to say stickers. Now, if you want to, you could abbreviate this and just put J's stickers. It doesn't matter. Why don't you get down on your paper what we've done so far. We've done our mm statement, and we've talked about the who and the what. Yes, ma'am? Do we have to write the question? No, you do not have to write the question. Okay, so the next thing we do. So far, we've written our answer statement. We've talked about who and what. So the fourth thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw a bar. So go ahead and do that on the paper. Whoa, what made that way too big? Let's see here. Undo. Okay.
check up here, if you had the text, you could do that too, so that I know that I've dealt with that information and I've represented it on my bar. Okay, so let's go on. Each page had 36 stickers on it. Is that all of the stickers or part of her stickers? It's part of her sticker. So is that going to go in here or is it going to go out here? Inside, because our parts are going to go inside. So I can write 36, 36, 36, 36, 36. So I'm going to put a check here because I dealt with that information. And then it says how many stickers does she have? So where is my question mark going to go? Am I missing, am I trying to find out a part, or am I trying to find out a total? The total. So my question mark is going to go out here. So, I want, so we have, what do we have here? How many groups do we have? Five. We have five groups of what? 36. 36. Okay, so I'm going to give you a minute, and I want you to each solve this on your paper. Come to the board and show us how you solved it. Okay, Janet, come to the board and show us how you solved 36 times 5. five really, it's 5 times 36 because it's 5 groups of 36. Tell me why you said that you said this is five times thirty. Why is this thirty and not three? Because the six we already at, um, multiplied that, so there go, a zero goes here. But what what's the value of this number? Is this value is it worth three or if I just write the number thirty six, is it worth three or is it worth thirty? Thirty. Thirty. Because what place is it in? The tens place, exactly right. Okay, so then you did you did five times six is thirty, and five times thirty is one hundred and fifty, and you added those together, and you got one hundred and eighty. Did somebody else solve it a different way? Okay, thank you, Janet. All right, Makai, come on up.